You are listening to the Last Spot Podcast, Adventures with the Trendsetter. I am your host, Brian Berger. Guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. Really appreciate it. We have special guest, adult film star performer, Ryan Driller. Yes, that is his name, Ryan Driller. It's a great name, too. I mentioned that's, I think, the first question I ask Ryan when we have him on. But again, he is a, a, a man who has been, uh, who's very recognized in the business, very respected, has spent a, a good amount of time in there, and has become one of the top male performers in the entire adult film industry. And um, he's, a, he's a very humble guy at heart, but uh, he wouldn't be the first one to tell you that. But uh, I'm going to tell you that because it's true. He is definitely somebody who, uh, you know, definitely has shown his longevity and also has the ability to, you know, portray certain characters. And, you know, the thing about what I mean characters is, you know, he's been known throughout the adult film industry now, I guess, as the king of the parodies, as I joke with him with, because, uh, you know, something very iconic, he, he did a, a parody movie. For most of you guys who don't know what that is, it's basically, you know, movies that have been done already and established, but they're taken to the adult film. Uh, film genre, I guess, or, or, or format of how they do it. And, you know, his iconic role as Superman in uh, Justice League Triple X, if you guys haven't seen it, go ahead, check it out, uh, has one of my favorites, Romy Rain, who's actually been on the show, interviewed at AVN, and Ryan, who played Superman. And Romy Rain played Wonder Woman. And does, does such a great job. It has those distinct features like a, you know, uh, believe it or not, a Christopher Reeves or, uh, or a Henry... Cavill or Cavell, however you want to pronounce his name, and you know, wearing the suit, the Superman suit is legit, and it's amazing when you look at these parodies, guys. For those of you who do watch, uh, you know, adult films, it's like sometimes they can be very corny, but then sometimes they can be really well made, and you know, definitely Justice League Triple X was very well made. And Ryan, like I said, you know, you call him the king of parody. It's funny because we had a we were talking about the business. I mean, I, I liked getting from the male perspective of what it's like to be in the adult film industry because, you know, not a lot of people or, or most males that watch uh, pornography or adult films think, oh, I can do that or I want to get in the business. And it's not as easy as one might think. And it's always a misconception because just because it looks easy, oh, anybody could do it. No, I've mentioned it several times, whether it be, you know, what Jeff and I do for the High Spot Podcast, which you guys can catch our stuff uh, on social media. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, like us on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, at High Spot Podcast. You know, whether you're a performer in the ring, you're a performer in adult movies, or you're an actor in mainstream Hollywood, or you're in sports and you're playing a, a certain sport, uh, it looks easy. So everybody thinks they can do it, but it takes a special athlete, it takes a special individual to be good in their particular field. And, you know, to me, Ryan is no exception. He does a great job. He's very humble at heart. You know, he, I don't think he takes himself way too seriously, which is a good thing sometimes because, you know, if you overthink things or you're, you believe your own hype, then that's where I feel at times people tend to get in trouble. But uh, he's very down to earth, and you guys want to follow him, you guys can follow him on Twitter and Instagram. One word, at Ryan Driller, pretty simple. And uh, it's just fun because we're talking about the ins and outs, how he got into the business. It wasn't very easy. It's not a clear path of how a male talent can get in there. And then the form of, you know, how do you get your name out there? For most females, it's always the the uh, the feeling towards them is that you want to create longevity. So you want to save certain things and work your way up towards the fact where you can build an audience. For a male perspective, it's kind of different because you have to get as much work as possible. And you only get a few chances to impress certain production companies or directors for them to have faith that you can be a not only uh, professional, but you can be a you could be somebody they can rely on, and that's a lot of pressure on males to be like I've mentioned before. The woman is the picture, and the man is the frame. So it takes a lot of work, and I don't think a lot of male talent get a lot of respect in terms of that, and a lot of credit at the same time. Granted, Ryan probably wouldn't accept it, but that's the way he is. And uh, before we get into the interview, uh, again, I have to thank Ryan for taking the time out of his day to do it because he was very busy. He was on call, and he uh, was running errands while he was doing it. So I thank him very much for taking time out of his busy day to uh, talk to me for a few minutes. And I also have to thank, thank the Rub PR uh, you know, Erica has been great, you know, working alongside of her and, re and her reaching out to me and me reaching out to her. Been a great relationship, great partnership with the Rub PR. If you guys want to catch them, uh, you guys can catch them at the Rub PR 
uh, on Twitter and rubpr.com as well to see other clients and see what they're all about. So, Erica, huge shout out to you. Thank you so much for doing what you do because it's greatly appreciated by me. I could be more uh, happy than to have a, a nice partnership with Adventures of the Translator slash High Spot Podcast with you. So, guys, without further ado, here is male performer Ryan Driller on the High Spot Podcast, Adventures of the Trendsetter. Enjoy. So Ryan, thank you so much for coming on the High Spot Podcast, Adventures with the Trendsetter. How are you doing, man? Hey, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. Good. It's a good day. It's a good day. Keeping busy, as I can tell, you know, running errands, which you're a man of many talents, to, to say a few. And, uh, you know, first thing I got to get off my chest, and something I'm sure you hear a lot of times, but again, with a name that you selected uh, for, your, uh, for your talent name, I'm sure you get a lot. I have to say, first and foremost, love the name, dude. Awesome name. <laughs> Thank you. You know, had to have some fun with it. So you had to, and yeah, and, and the thing is, yeah. you seem to have fun in everything you do, and it's clearly seen from interviews I've seen that you've done before, whether they be articles or videos on YouTube. You seem to really enjoy what you do, and then the emphasis that I always see in you, more than uh, most talents I see, is that you make an emphasis to acknowledge that you want to be here, you want to do this. So speaking of that, Absolutely. yeah, speaking of that, you know, you you clearly dove into this because it's something you wanted to do. You did the research, you did the homework. How difficult was the process, theoretically, to actually get into the industry? Because I know you went out there and sent emails to agencies. Was it as difficult as you thought to get into it, or was it uh, a little bit uh, more difficult? You know, I did a ton of research trying to figure out how to get in, and when I finally said, you know, I'm going to shed the the status quo, the normal middle American lifestyle, and I'm going to pursue this. Um, you have no, you'd never have any idea how to do it. That's why I have several hundred emails from people asking, like, hey, help me get in. And yeah, exactly. years ago, you know, I'm, I'm looking and I'm like, all right, well, I check out these sites and, uh, you know, down on the bottom. And, and some of them had, like, become a model. And I would submit something there. Granted, most of them are also asking for my bust size and hip size. And I was like, yeah, I know that they were definitely looking for women on that one. But I'm still going to submit it because maybe they'll check it out. And then... I mean, I was checking on Craigslist and trying to find because he used to have an adult gig section. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm I'm reaching out to everybody everywhere that I can kind of that I could kind of figure out on my own. But like me trying to figure out how I got in the industry is also like asking a monkey how he got in the zoo. Like neither of us have any idea. Mm-hmm. Like, we just ended up here, and that's about all we can tell you. Um, and I talk with the other guys in the industry. Like, like none of us, there wasn't really like a clear path. So it, it kind of seems like it's like launch codes. Like they change every day. So, I mean, I looked and I I beat the pavement and I responded to ads and I sent out emails and and by luck of chance I happened to like get in on one production and then a second production because the the production manager moved me to another project they were working on and and it just snowballed from there. But it took it took a long time and. Like I said, I mean, everything changes because the industry is always changing as we're trying to keep up with how to make money and with everybody and how the Internet works. That's it's a weird thing to try and figure out how to make money on the Internet is everybody's making money on the Internet and offering everything for free, too. So no, that's very yeah. true. But uh, with that being said, though, I mean, just kind of describing the fact of the process that went into actually getting in the industry and, and all the work that you had to do and all the research, and clearly it was something that you wanted to do. Otherwise, you wouldn't do all the work to get into it. And like your fellow colleagues, male talent, uh, would say the same thing. But do you think now there's been a difference in terms that has it gotten a little bit easier or has it evolved now? For example, if there's a male talent in the future besides running up to you and like you always hear all the time, how do I get in the business? Do you think it's easier for them to research it themselves or is it just so much content out there it's kind of hard to lead male talent as opposed for female talent usually you hear the stories that they were discovered they did cam modeling they were dancing uh at a strip club and they got discovered so has the process become easier for male talent who really want to take this seriously um no i mean like i said it just because the whole process changes every time yeah you know being male talent the hardest part is um you can you can i mean this sounds like i'm totally discrediting what the women do and i'm not by any stretch of the means but yeah. you can fake everything with the woman <laughs> Like, oh, yeah. throw some lube on, she moans extra loud, she puts on that, that thing, like, you can fake that. You wait a minute, wait a minute, Ryan, you're telling so, me that women are faking it, it on screen? What are you going to tell me now? There's no such thing as Santa what? Claus? I would never. <laughs> you're, you're crushing my illusion out here, would, man, come I on. never, but, <laughs> you know, when it comes to the guys, <laughs> right, right, so, you know, I mean, like, because, 
I mean, it's not even like ease of access. Like, if anything, the ease of access is the same thing as like every girl mocking and making fun of guys for take and and do and unsolicited. Like, I have. 500 dick pics sent to me every month from random people because they think that, oh, here's my dick. Like, I want to be in porn. Mm-hmm. And, like, and probably 400 of those have no desire to get into porn. They just want to share their dick with somebody. And then the other 100 are actually trying to get in or think they want to try and get in or, or whatever. But it's like, I can't do anything about it. Sending a dick pic isn't going to do anything about it. Like, that doesn't actually, that's, that's not actually going to get your foot in the door. But because of social media, like, you, you have that access to everybody in the industry that has social media. Um, so, I mean, that's where some things change. Like, you know, I said, I got in through Craigslist, but that whole section on Craigslist doesn't exist anymore. Um, some guys get in because they were dating a girl that was in the industry and she brought him on set because she wanted to use him for a, a content scene or, you know, one thing for her website or, yeah. um, or they needed more guys and he's been kind of talking about it. So she's like, yeah, we'll, we'll throw them in this way. But really truth be told like a lot of studios are not out there recruiting or looking for guys to come in because it's one of those like we're not looking to take a chance on anybody like we know that there's working male talent that's out there we know that these guys have proven that they can get a hard on in front of 40 people in the middle of the desert with no food and and knock it out so we're going to go with the people that we know and and even then it's like just because i work for 30 companies over here doesn't mean that the one company over on the right is is willing to take me on because they don't know how I am or how I'm going to interact with that, with those producers, with those directors. And you get a class of personalities. Sometimes that affects the whole, the whole boner situation. So, you know, it's kind of one of those, like once you get in, you're in, but getting in is, it's easier to find a leprechaun and, and take him to your, or take him to his pot of gold just because people aren't really looking to take a chance on a guy when that, could end up costing them several thousand dollars for day rates and locations and, and everything if the guy can't perform. So, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's easier, but it wouldn't, and I'd almost say it's harder because maybe the guys that are genuinely trying to get in that are genuinely reaching out and are really trying to, to do that are getting lost in the shuffle of the other 500 guys that are just sending a dick pic to send a dick pic. So, yeah, it's like sending a resume to like a board and that job doesn't exist anymore, but people are still sending in the resume when it's there just for, you know, HR purposes basically, which I've fell victim to many times right. before. And uh yeah, it's hard to get lost in the right. shuffle cuz everybody's sending in the same resume, everybody's sending in the same dick pic though, you know, the word of advice I always here, stop sending those cuz you don't really need to send that. That's not going to get you in the door. But um no, like you said, it's it's a long strenuous process and you've definitely worked towards getting it. But another thing too is that not only have you worked towards getting there starting from the bottom and working your way back up to where you have a pretty good stature now in the adult film industry, um uh, in the clear indication of that, at least from a fan's perspective, would be that you know you've been nominated for several awards. You've won uh, through XBiz, the Male Performer of the Year. For you, I, I wouldn't say. And let me be careful when I phrase this. I'm not going to say that it's um, <laughs> vindication in terms of you know some people don't look at awards as it's vindication or it's it's validation. For example, validation. Sorry, that's the word I'm looking for in terms of they did the right, right. thing. But uh, yeah, does it make you feel good at times knowing that your talent and your hard work has been recognized by your peers? You know, it is it is very nice to to have that recognition, and incredibly surprising to get like to get that performer of the year uh, a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. or to get any scene where it's like, you know, it's like it's like awesome. Like I'm I'm obviously here because I want to be here and I want to do this, and and at the end of the day, as long as I get to do it, that's where I'm going to be happy. But it's nice that I'm doing right by it because. Everybody with a phone, like everybody, everybody with a phone has a freaking camera attached to that phone and they can upload anything they want to any of those suit sites. Yeah. And people do that. So you have a ton of content. And you've got, you've, I mean, I'm not from not my fellow performers, but you've got a couple hundred of my fellow performers that like, they do great scenes over here working for browsers or Wicked or Naughty America or whoever. But then they shoot their own content and it's like, you know, there's an amateur and then just like, wow that I'm like, you just, you set the phone out and you turned on the camera just so you could hook up with that girl because you can't yeah. see shit. And that looks like shit. Like it's, it's terrible. But what I wanted to ask you too, is that uh, I've spoken to uh, several female talent uh, throughout my time here. And I did this on a whim too, back last year, trying to cover Exotica and ended up talking to a lot of great people there. And uh, for me yeah. is it's like, 
it's easy to see it from the female's talent's perspective where they have to end up, for example, pacing themselves. But it really feels from the male's right. perspective, they don't only really have to do that. They don't have that type of uh, issue where, for example, females have to worry. For example, sometimes they manage their career like, listen, I'm going to do girl, girl, boy, girl. I'm going to start doing, you know, uh, DPs. I'm going to start doing interracials. I'm going to start doing all these crazy things. And they pace themselves out so they have more longevity in their career. Do the same rules apply in your perspective from the male talent's perspective? Or is it really just gain as much work as you possibly can? to you get the notoriety we can work with some of the higher female talent? You know, um, it's a whole toss-up. And, and I know a lot of the women, I mean, the funny thing is that you look at a lot of the women and they do hold off and they pace themselves in terms of like what they're releasing and, and mm-hmm. they, they get it going like that. And then at the same time, you've got one agency that's like, cool, you signed with us, you're doing everything. Like, you're not allowed. You can say no to work for the day if you're tired and you're exhausted. But you're not going to like hold out on doing DP or girl, girl, you know, you're, we're not going to pace you out like that. Like if you, if, if you're comfortable with it, absolutely. Like if it's not your thing, you know, we're not going to force you to do anything you don't want to do. But, and some of the, the most well-recognized names are part of that agency and, and have been, and, and we're huge and, and, and kept going. Um, on the guy's standpoint, and this is the thing that like, I have my theory and I'm watching and, as everything's kind of changed in the last, and I, I really say in the last 10 years, because I know I got in and everybody was kind of saying like, oh, you just missed the uh, heyday. You just missed this. And things used to be like this. Mm-hmm. And also when I got in, I remember walking on sets and like the girls freaking out with, oh my God, like your talent, like you're too pretty to be the talent for this industry. So, wow. Like, and they were excited for me to show up. Now, since then, you've got guys that are more aesthetically appealing you've got guys that are you know the whole scene becomes more archer with especially sites like x art and and med art and and those kind of scenes and then a lot of the, the dvds and the features we do where you know we're we're putting out much better quality movies films scripts than than we had in the past and it's not it's still a joke in terms of like oh yeah we're a porn actor loose loose translation on the actor part <laughs> um and now it's like it is getting so much better and we're able to go do stuff like I mean Stormy was great on Saturday Night Live the other night and, and one thing is like kind of proven like yeah we we are starting to hold our own in the entertainment industry um, so with that being said it's like with the guys where before like girls did need to pace themselves on I think I'm kind of the axe and or they thought they needed to pace themselves on the axe where I think more so the girls held their value by not being shot out like you know they didn't have where you turn around and Every single time you see this girl on every website coming up and it's like, I'm going to take a break from her because I want to see someone new Um, with the guys for the longest time. The guys, I mean, you didn't see their face. You didn't really see who they were. They definitely shot around them. And it's like it was was a glorified prop. And now things are really starting to kind of balance out. And you have guys that are more, like I said, are more aesthetically appealing. You've got guys that are better actors and we're having to to stand our ground with that. Um, And, and there's a bigger fan base of of both women and men that are paying attention to the guys more and more where we're gaining some more of this notoriety. And, and I think we start running into the same thing where it's like, yeah, get as much as you can, you know, knock it out. Everybody, everybody always wants to work all the time and, and we'll shoot guys four or five, six times more than a girl any day of the week anyway, because there's still the mindset that, and it doesn't really matter about the guy, yeah. but I am seeing it's subtle and I don't know if it's going to like really take off where it's like people may start getting sick of seeing me in every feature or seeing me on every naughty America scene or, you know, some of those where, I mean, like right now my biggest bread and butter is the, um, the VR stuff, the virtual reality stuff where you never see my face. You never see anything below my chest. Most of the time you wouldn't even know it's me because you can't really see any identifiable tattoos or anything. Like my arms aren't in it. My, my feet are gone. It's like, yeah. you know, I can work six days a week, seven days a week doing that. And nobody knows who I am, which is, which is great. Like that's kind of a, but that's gotta be so much more difficult for you in that standpoint where you're li- literally just laying there as a flat prop. You know, you don't, oh, yeah. you, you don't get any, and I wouldn't say, I mean, you want to enjoy yourself as well, just as much as the girl too. But at the same time, it's like, it's right. a lot of pressure for you to lay there, cameras all over you and you have to maintain an erection or just maintain a scene to get it done. So I, I, I would assume that's not right. necessarily an enjoyable experience either. It's, 
very sensitive to right now. Um, it's, <laughs> it's definitely different. Um, I, I'm one of the few guys, like, I love it because okay. I don't have to worry about the other 75 things going on in the scene. Like, am I blocking anything? Can, is everything opened up appropriately? Are there any shadows? Let's hide this. You know, even the skinniest girl, you bend her in a, in a particular position. Like, I think anybody's going to have, like, a role. So it's like, am I hiding all of that? Am I counting out the right amount of time in my head to make sure we're getting enough footage of this, that, and the other? Mm-hmm. Um, so now I get to just lay back, and it's like, and with how the cameras are set up and how they, they shoot everything, they see everything. So it's like, we really get to just have sex. Oh, and okay. now I get to be the spoiled one where it's like, yeah, you just you just play with me however you want, and I get to just enjoy it. So, That's true. So I have that. But a lot of the guys can't relinquish or, like, they think they have to relinquish all the control for that, and they have to be totally dismissive. And the other guys have a, a hard time being, like, you have to be dead silent because your face is right next to the microphones. If I make a moan or a gasp or anything, the viewer is going to hear that in his ear when he's watching the scene, and I don't think most guys want to hear uh, right into their ear as... <laughs> <laughs> no, Ryan, the reason I'm laughing is because this is what I appreciate about you. You didn't have to do the moan, but you did it anyway but for the purpose to, to get the point across. And I love that. It's hilarious. <laughs> you could have just said moan, yeah, yeah. but you had to add the, uh, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Right. Just, just for everybody listening. And of course. Like, they have yeah, to, they have to know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah, there is, there is that. I'm looking at the guys like coming up behind me that have, that have gotten in i'm going okay like i fully support them and i think that the, i don't want to say the good guys but like most of the guys there is kind of a brotherhood amongst us and we all want to see each other succeed none of us are really trying to knock each other down like we're not trying to steal scenes i can't be in four cities at once so it's not like i'm worried about that i want i want people to succeed and i want them to do well because you know then there's no stress when i show up like if i get that call like hey we need you to come fill in like everybody's panicked and trying to make sure that they're out before the location time gets up or they get double charged. So, um, and they're frustrated because whatever went wrong beforehand. So it's like, if that isn't happening, great. Everybody tends to be a lot happier. There's more, you know, they're more copacetic, not to mention like they're not wasting any money anywhere. So rates stay up. So I want to see that at the same time, I'm looking at some of these guys going, you could be my replacement. You could be my replacement. You could be my replacement. So it's like, okay, I need to step up my game and make sure that I'm, keeping everything you know legit and holding my own like yeah that's it that's taking it taking on a personal trainer to to maintain physical form yeah. as well as like endurance and and the physicality that is that the job demands you bring up a great point in terms of the fact that I don't think a lot of people realize this, especially from the male talent's perspective. And that's why I always find it fascinating talking to the male talent because, again, a lot of people tend to forget them. I always say that I think you guys are like the picture frame, the girl's the picture, obviously. You guys have to end up supporting the woman and making her look just as good. Granted, she could probably do it on her own. But still, you guys are a vital vital in that category in terms of making the scene good as well. But uh, in terms of you talking about a brotherhood, that's what I got a lot from speaking to some of the male talent when I went to AVN in January that – a lot of them were supportive of new guys coming in. But again, I don't think anybody wants to admit that there is theoretically, in a sense, still competition amongst yourselves. As much as you guys want to be you know, kind and nice to each other and be supportive, you just said it too. You could be looking at a guy and saying, that could be my replacement. How do you balance that out where you're not in your own head? Or is it just kind of easy for you because you've dealt with it for so long now? Yeah, I mean, it's easy for me because I know it's like, I can also find where so-and-so and I are so vastly different mm-hmm. and go all right, he's definitely got the much younger look. It's like I can shave and I can throw on a backpack and try and dress young all I want. I'm still going to look like David Spade trying to go to college. (laughs) You know, you're not going to believe it. Oh, don't be so cruel to yourself, Ryan. Come on, seriously, David Spade? Whoa. It's like it's a stretch to pretend that I'm a college age kid anymore. (laughs) But, you know, I'll play the professor. I play the dad. I play the stepbrother. You know, there's still other things I can play there because it's like, oh, he's the older stepbrother. Like, like there's no problem with that. I can age down some, but not that much. Yeah. So to see some of the guys, it's like, yeah, you look like you, 18 year old senior in high school, freshman in college. Like, like all right, that's fine there. Not to mention, it's it's seeing their own personalities come through and their own ability to handle various scripts and and a lot of the stuff. It's like, you know, we're kind of going a lot of mainstream Hollywood too, where you look at some of the biggest guys in, in mainstream Hollywood and it's like George Clooney, 
not a 22 year old like yeah. Brian Reynolds not a 22 year old like I mean Ryan's more on the comedy side of things but it's like if you look at some of the bigger more seriously taken actors and like the roles that everybody really kind of talks about it like, yeah plus that's not a fair I comparison mean, you know why because like Ryan Reynolds is aged amazingly I hope he ages one day at least in his life and George Clooney right. I mean I still haven't forgiven him for Batman so you know to me he killed the franchise <laughs> so I'll always I'll always I'll always have that in my uh, stuck in my craw when I think of George Clooney though but you're, you're talking about yeah Dwayne The Rock Johnson too is another example as well yeah. I mean, all these guys stay pleasing but then they reach a certain role in a certain genre obviously as you get older but you know with that being said though you know, ages. You know, it's it's uh it's undefeated. Basically, it gets us all. But in terms of longevity for you, it's clear that you've had it. It's clear that you you know how to work it where you can continually get work because not only are you good a performer, right. but you're very reliable to companies that want to use you. But you right. know, with you being as busy as you are and doing all these things too, I always find this very interesting too because here here I am trying to balance things out. I'm doing a million things at once, very similar to yourself because you're running errands as you're doing this interview and I thank you for taking the time out to do it. How do you balance all those things out or is it just a constant struggle every single day to kind of find balance within it? You know, Do you get a chance to at this stage maybe enjoy the journey and not worry so much about where the end all destination is going to be for yourself? Yeah, I mean, I've always... I've always made sure to have that balance. Uh, in my previous life, I had actually more chaotic schedules than I do now. Um, I mean, now it's a little more controlled, but I mean, still, like we were saying, like an hour ago, an hour and a half ago, I was getting a phone call saying, like, "Are you? we just want to know if you're available. Mm-hmm. We may need you. It, we'll let you know. Uh, so sometimes it's chaos like that, and it's like, I don't know. I'm not, clock, I'm not clocking into a nine-to-five, but yeah. I'm also not trying to orchestrate 500 people between like all around the Atlantic ocean and Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, um, on boats and on islands and and doing all that, which I did in my previous life or wrangle radio station executives and sales departments and DJs and the concerts and, and everything that was going on there. It's like this, at least now I am just controlling me, but I always, for my own like sanity and to like keep that balance, I love the people I work with and I will hang out with them hands down, no contest, but I always make sure to have a large base of friends or my significant other. Like I don't date within my own job just so I can make when I'm out with that person. There's no, I mean, there's no, I mean, the common ground is other interests outside of what happened at the office today. Yeah. So, uh, so we do that. And now I am fortunately at a point in my career where I can, I can say, no, like I'm taking off this weekend. I'm going to Mexico with a couple of friends and we're going to go down to Puerto Vallarta. Or, um, I mean, last year I went off to Europe for three weeks and, and traveled around. Um, is that, is that the cover yep. page on your, on your Twitter account? Were you were in Europe. Where were you in Europe on that one? On your Twitter account? We went, uh, we went from Greece. We went Santorini, Athens, Dubrovnik, Croatia, uh, Zagreb, Croatia, and then out to a little island called Kirk where my grandparents grew up. Uh-huh. And then went up to Florence, Italy, and down to Rome. So it was like a 21-day trip. We Oof. almost, if you watch the show Below Deck um, on Bravo, we almost added a week on the boat because they were filming in Naples that exact same time, and they needed they needed people. So yeah, um, it was like heavily discounted to go on and, and, and do that. So it was one of those things like, I was able to take that and schedule it out and be like, I can take three weeks off, totally unplug. I mean, I took pictures, but otherwise it's like, I'm not answering phone calls or emails and really dealing with anything there. And I can just go enjoy the world. I've been able to reap those benefits. Yeah. Or even yesterday, Sunday, day before yesterday. Um, I did get asked like, Hey, are you available Sunday? And it was like, you know what? I already made plans with a handful of friends to go down to Disneyland. And it was like, we're all, been working nonstop for the last six months or three months and, and swamped with everything. It's like, we're just going to go let loose, have a couple glasses of wine or a couple bottles and ride a couple roller coasters, find some terrible fried food and, and enjoy Disneyland. So that's, that's how I kind of keep my sanity. I try and I try and get out and about every day, I take the dogs for a hike. So I'm an outdoors guy. Like you put me in the sun, you put me in the water. I'm going to be totally happy. And that'll kind of like, even keel everything out and I'm, I'm good to go yeah well you seem really even keel talking to you right here so it's great to have that balance and it's just like that's the dream of everybody to be able to kind of dictate your own schedule to be like where you are right now in your career where you could say that hey listen no i'm taking this week off i'm doing this with friends and have that flexibility that freedom which is 
why you worked so hard to get there in the first place. You know, I got to talk to you about this thing too. That's always funny, and it's 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 funny how they they nickname you the king of parodies. And you even admitted too. That's kind of where you got your footing, basically. For after working for a while and really doing that, and you know, everybody likes to talk about your iconic, you know, uh, role as Superman, Clark Kent, and stuff like that. And how you are a fan of that. To me, Christopher Reeves will always be my Superman. What's it to you? Do right. you feel the same way about Christopher Reeves, or do you like what Henry Cavill's doing? Brandon Roth, I think he did a good job, but just a bad script. You can't work with that. Where do you where do you like this the the direction where Superman's going in right now? You know, I I do really like Cavill. Um, I think he's got a great look. I think he's he's bringing a lot to the character. I think he, I love. I mean, I grew up on Christopher Reeve too, and playing him sound like it was actually they superimposed my head on Christopher Reeve's body mm-hmm. to pitch to Axel Bond. However many years ago that was, eight years ago, yeah. and even when they sent me the picture, I I couldn't tell that it was me for a second, and they couldn't <laughs> tell that it was. <laughs> like we were looking at it back and forth and it's like wow this angle like the right photo like we really did have an identical look going on so that was that was cool there um now when you put like this random photo that they sent in yeah but um now when you put yeah, the so suit on though when you put the suit on real quick before you, you talk about the the journey of where superman is right now yeah. currently in, in the dc realm when you put the suit on not just the 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 actual reject suits from the man of steel you use for the parody you guys did where it's Justice League Triple X, right? Did you feel right. different when you put that suit on? Were you like, holy crap, this is oh, actually yeah. Superman. I actually now I'm standing more upright. My shoulders are back. My right. chest is out. I feel like Superman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's it's very, I mean, Cavill said the exact same thing. It's like, it's very empowering. Like, you can't help but feel like the superhero the moment you put it on. And like, to catch that glimpse in the mirror and you're like, I did, this should totally be ridiculous and I should be laughing or, you know, you have that kind of thing. It's like, I'm in a giant spandex condom, pretty much. It's like, but yeah, pretty much. This just is right. Like, this is awesome. And, and there was a brief moment before when I heard, like, they were casting. I was like, I don't think I could desecrate the character like that. Like, I am such a Superman fan. Yeah. I don't know if I'd want to taint him with the porn image. And then at the same time, I went, no, hands down. I absolutely want to go in and fill in the blanks in between the panels so that everybody else remembers and sees and then like it pans out or you know on the movie that pan off or in the um in the comics it went on to the next panel and it was like yeah no i definitely want to you know get with lois and all the comic book characters that we definitely used to, to watch and kind of fantasize about so so that was awesome um totally cool loved it and then i mean the, the cavill costume the reject that one's incredible that one was i mean i haven't that one felt so much better and it it breathed so much better and that one was even more I think because of like the chain mail aspect to it that was on it and, and the lack of you know it was, even DC did it and they got rid of the, the red underwear on the outside mm-hmm. you, it just it did kind of pop that just a little more where you felt like okay this is really happening and it had that little bit of like touch to kind of accentuate yeah I'm not wearing any muscle suit Cavill wore a muscle suit for half of Man of Steel and then he outgrew it with the muscle plan that, and the, the bodybuilding plan that he was on yeah. So you can notice some subtleties on it when when watching it. Like it, the suit looks really shiny. Mm-hmm. That was early on in filming, and he's got the muscle suit on underneath it. But otherwise, like that is that's all him. And you can see it still has the same definition and has that same pop to it and that same like larger than life embodiment to it. Where you, you like, yeah, yeah, that's Superman. That's all right. It's badass. I'm gonna take that. That's cool. <laughs> Have you had a chance to watch uh, Infinity Wars? I did, and I just, if you look on my thing, it was, it's, a, it's, a, it's the lightest spoiler I think you'll ever see. Oh, wait, I'm looking at it right but, now. Oh, yeah, I saw it right now. Your theory? Yeah. <laughs> Your Avengers theory? theory? <laughs> yeah, a couple of us were talking about it. It's like, I, you know, I like, like, I like and I love that member of Superman, Justice League, Man of Steel, like all that, even though they're totally different takes and a lot of people rip on them all the time. But it's like, you know, I'm watching these characters come to life the same way that everybody saw Christopher Reeve take light. Like that was the first time you really saw a man fly on film mm-hmm. and, and it looked that realistic. And it's like, we go back and look at it now and it's like, well, you can see him shaking on the cables as they're pulling them up on the car. Oh, yeah, it looks, it looks so like, bad nowadays compared to the CGI and technology that it is now. Yeah, exactly. So to see some of that stuff in the new Superman ones, it's like, all right, that's incredible. And it's like, 
you know what? I'm not paying that much attention to the script. I think the ultimate version of Batman vs Superman is a whole lot better than the theater one, but it, it makes a little more sense. I kind of like that they're trying to do like a reset button on Justice League and just kind of like, we're going to have to forget about everything beforehand. We're going to address it, but we're going to kind of like, we're going to bring the characters from the pages of the comics and let them be that. And that's, yeah, at the end of the movie, like Cavill was more of that character. So I liked him for that reason. It's like, I just want to see the characters that I idolize mm-hmm. on film. I want to see them move and do their thing. You know, rip it apart for the script all you want, but <laughs> that's, that's what made me happy. That's kind of how I felt about Avengers. It was like, it was compared to every other Marvel DC, uh, Marvel Disney movie, I thought it, it, it lacked a lot of the heart and a lot of like, usually it's a real clear, concise story arc kind of thing. And this was a little chaotic. It worked and it was great and it was fun. It just wasn't like necessarily my favorite, but it was great. And then as we've been talking about it, I was like, oh, I had that theory that I just put out where it was like, hold on. Like there are some things that have been striking similarities. And like, unfortunately, they kind of spoiled their own thing when you're going, well, obviously they're not all dead because they already announced their sequels and yeah, I'm uh, out with another Spider-Man movie, you know, three story movie arc. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, they're not getting rid of black Panther anytime soon. Like, come on, like dude just made a billion dollars. Like one of the biggest movies of all time. And oh yeah. 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 He's going to be back for a couple few more. So, but I like your take you know on it I mean? though, because you're, you're talking about more of like the comic book side of it. And for me, what I've always find appealing to, and like, here's the thing that we're, I think you and I differ a little bit on this is for example, I, I know how you felt about the Chris, uh, the Christopher, the Christopher Nolan, uh, Dark Knight series. I think right now what Marvel had done, although, you know, it's kind of funny. Do you think you're trying to put realism behind these characters? I mean, you have, you have right. Thor, you have the Hulk, you have, you know, got, you know, all these weird anomalies of, of, of characters, but they try to make it so sense of real that could really happen that you're, I think right. that's what I think the comic book genre has changed to as opposed to back then when we saw the Christopher Reeves or the Batman, like the Adam West, it was all cartoony. It was all comic book wise, but even comic books, you have to say, have kind of changed their genre too, where it's now a little bit more darker. I mean, I look at pages now and it's not the bright colors that we used to see before too, but right. you know, it's interesting. It's, it's kind of giving that balance in between the both. But at, at the end of the day, just like, you know, the Dolph film industry and what you're doing and you're trying to do the Justice League parody, you're not going to please everybody. Everybody's going to be upset about something. Right. Yeah, I mean, everybody's going to say, and I think, like, the biggest complaint I always see with all of them is, like, Chris from Nolan thing. I'm like, yeah, they were great mafia movies. <laughs> they were awesome mafia movies. It wasn't Batman. Like, it was an awesome mafia movie. And I'll always give him credit for that. But, and, like, bringing in the realism, it's like, oh, it's got to be so realistic. And it's like, I get that now that we have Google in our phones, like, in our hands, and we can get the answers to everything, and everybody kind of tries to to spoil everything, you know, there's oh, yeah. the destruction of magic and like mysticism. It's like, you got to know everything and you're going to go ahead and like, Oh, well, this is how this happened. And this is how this happened. And this is why this can't happen. And it's totally impossible. And it's like, you know, I, I said since day one, I was like, Deadpool did amazing because Deadpool was Deadpool from the pages of the comic book. They didn't try and like bring it real. It was like, it, it's just here. Here it is. Yeah, and it pokes That's fun it. at all Do the it. criticisms that we normally hear from time to time from people that have their phones and want to be movie critics, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, and I see some some really kind of took that to heart, and it's like Marvel really did a good a good deal with that, where it was like they made some stuff a little more realistic with some of the characters that weren't as like sci-fi or like fantasy-ish, but others, you know, they they tried to leave a lot of the aliens out of it, even though they're doing a lot of aliens. Or, you know, obviously getting bit by a radioactive spider, everybody knows radiation causes cancer, not superpowers. So it's like, mm, yes. you know, kind of tweaking things here and there. <laughs> it's like, I get that. But, um, you know, DC was trying to make it all super realistic. And I think now they just kind of went, let's get back to mythology and history. And that's why I think they just kind of had some fun with it there. And it's like, and that was why I liked the end of it. Because it was like, cool, it's Batman being Batman. It's Superman being Superman. Flash needs a little bit of work, but it's mm-hmm. still Flash being Flash. But you've got these characters being being these guys. You know, Avengers almost kind of started taking that, like, really dark turn. It was like, I mean, I get that's the story arc, but at the same time, this is a totally different feel from everything. Like, he kind of went, kind of went different. But, like I said, you can't necessarily see everybody visually. Awesome. Got to see everything I wanted to see, what I wanted to see on there. With enough question to be like, where was Ant-Man? Why Why was Hulk kept yelling no? Like, like what was all this kind of going on there? But yeah. bright, pretty colors 
awesome characters. We had a lot of fun with it. God, I could talk to you forever, man. I love talking to you about this stuff. Uh, I always get excited talking about just comic books. And, and, and something that we do here on the iSpot Podcast, we talk about professional wrestling. Have you ever watched professional wrestling, or, or do you follow it? Did you watch it as a kid? Uh, is there ever a point in your life where you saw professional wrestling? You know, I never did. I mean, I never watched like any of the matches or fights or anything like that. I knew who The Rock was. I knew who Hulk Hogan was. That's about it. Okay, wow. Well, you might be the I first didn't really one. Like, Maybe the first one I've ever spoken to has never actually watched it, but at least you know some of the names like Coke Hogan, you know, The Rock, you know, maybe Stone Cold Steve Austin you've heard of before. These names transcend through the general audience as well, so they know who they right. are. But, uh, you know, what I, what I always find comparisons compared to professional wrestling and to the adult film industry, and people laugh at me when I say this, but I think it's very true, is just, you know, the daily grind, working at something you love to do, and it's not easy. If it was, everybody would do it. You know, the physical toll it takes on, you know, professional wrestlers that are in the ring falling countless times a day. And the countless toll physically, I'm sure it's, it's very physically demanding what you guys do as well. So, you know, a lot of people don't see that. They only see the finished product or the fantasy that they want to see and all the hard work that goes behind it because a lot of people look at these features or these scenes and like oh my goodness it's amazing it looks so easy i would want to do it and it's really it's all broken down it's all scientific there's nothing uh sexual or or fantastic about it in terms of the process it takes to get done yeah i mean we're getting back to that but yeah for the most part it really is it's choreographed you know what you're doing, how you're doing it, where it's going, what's the next move. Like you said, five minutes to seven minutes of missionary. Okay, now we're going to move over to doggy. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, what are we on? We're on a couch? Yeah, let's do spoon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it all becomes mechanical, okay. basically. All right, five minutes here, move to the next position type of thing. But uh, yeah. two more for me, Ryan. I'll let you go because I know you're a busy man. Uh, to, to For you, yeah. what makes the best chemistry in terms of on screen? Uh, is it something that you feel you, you sense right away? Or does it take some time with the partner you're working with to feel that chemistry, to be like, you know what, There's, we've got something here, or it's going to be a long day? Um, it always it always kind of varies. I will admit, and this is one thing the industry changed for the better, I would say, um, but the the people that, that love sex, that enjoy sex, that want to be in the industry, it's super easy to have that connection, that chemistry with, because we all want to be here. It's not just like, all right, I got to go punch the clock and, yeah. you know, time to go make the donuts. So I'm <laughs> kind of dragging like that where you're like, cool, I'm going to have a better time just riding this couch right now than her. Um, but that, you know, that doesn't necessarily happen anymore. And it doesn't happen as much because the industry is open enough for the girls to get in. You know, they weren't like duped into getting in. It wasn't like a suitcase then like threw them in or, you know, like, oh, hey, I'm a big modeling agent, and this is going to be amazing to get into. Like, we're all just kind of like, yeah, we're just looking for the next booty call anyway, so let's do this. Like, <laughs> that's why we're here. Well, Ryan, uh, you have so much to look forward to, so much stuff coming out right now, all these all the features that we never had a chance to talk about because we're so much talking about comic books, which is amazing. All these late scenes coming out, guys, look forward to it. I'll post it up, and I'll, I'll put it to the link on the, on the website. But with all that you're doing now and all the awards you're being promoted for, I always ask this of everyone, and I think I kind of have an idea, I mean, of, of future things you want to do along the way in your career, maybe post-career. But in 2018, believe it or not, a quarter is almost over. Before I know it, it's going to go by fast. We're going to be done with 2018. I don't talk about news resolutions because I don't believe them. I think people even say them, they're just setting themselves up for failure. But what personal goals outside the business do you hope to obtain, hopefully within the end of this year, to really feel like you accomplished something this year for yourself personally? Uh, I mean, one goal that I've had this year is to get SAG, uh, to get union. Mm -hmm. SAG. Um, And that's been kind of the one I've been working on with mainstream stuff was, and, and so pushing along with so you know that's the that's the big goal kind of like relatively industry related and and outside at the same time so otherwise it's i mean i'm enjoying this year last year was on a personal level last year was a little rough with uh with a few medical things so this year i'm just kind of like taking it easy and yeah i heard and about enjoying. that are you are you good are you 100 yeah. percent right now i'm totally good it was a total fluke thing i mean it's a regular thing i have to deal with but uh, one that is is under control. So, All right, yeah, good. It, it just last year seemed like every time, and like I can't complain about anything last year because everything was still awesome. Work was great, personal life was great. Just I had that that kidney stone and the kidney issue that just kind of kept every time I get up, it would knock me back down. I was like, this is come on now. So, so this year get to just like reset everything and 
and just enjoy it. And like I said, I mean, I'm super busy with work, which is awesome. Yeah. So that's keeping me entertained and having fun there. And it's given me the option, like an availability to go do whatever I want outside that too. Like Disney, Mexico, all that kind of stuff. So, well, Ryan, like, all right, professionally, we'll get back. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> You'll get there eventually. No doubt. Yeah. I mean, the main thing yeah. is that you're healthy and you're feeling good right now. And that's the main point because at the same time, you know, all the money in the world doing what you love to do. If you can't physically feel healthy and good, none of it matters, basically, in my opinion. Ryan, I love talking to you, man. Uh, I, I really wanted to interview you because looking at your past interviews, I think you just kind of uh, exude this uh, ability of, you know, chase your dream, go after it. And more importantly, more than anything, that the point I try to get across, whether I'm doing the High Spot podcast with my... Uh, with my co-host Jeff Martin, we're talking about professional wrestling. We have professional wrestlers and talents and promoters on there. We're having, you know, this new genre I guess I'm diving into in the adult film world, which I am 100% committed to, is that you're doing something you love and, you know, as much as they say it's an old cliche and they hate them, you know, never work a day in your life if you do something you love. You are a perfect example of, you know, you do something, you want to be in it, you're fully committed to it, you do the work to get there, and now hopefully you get to reap the benefits of it. Not that you're done anytime soon, but, you know, I'm really happy for you that things are going well for you. And like I said, I could talk to you for hours, but I thank you so much for the time and we'll love to have you back on the show again. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, man. Awesome, man. Guys, Ryan Driller, you guys want to catch him on Twitter, it's at Ryan Driller. Instagram, same thing, Ryan Driller, all one word. Or just Google it, you lazy bastards, for God's sakes. You have to give, I have to give them everything all the time. It's, it's amazing. Everybody's so like, I have to give them everything. Guys, just Google it. You'll find Ryan Driller. Great guy. Very knowledgeable on comics. Can't wait to see what's uh, next in the future for you, man. So thank you so much. Take care, and uh, I'll catch you again, man. For sure. So Thank you. Huge shout out and thanks goes out to Ryan Driller. Again, uh, thanking him so much for his time. Uh, you guys can catch him on Twitter and Instagram at Ryan Driller, all one word. Also got to thank the Rub PR, Erica. Thank you so much for ha- helping set this whole thing up. I hope you guys got a good uh, perspective on you know, on the male talents uh, viewpoint in the adult film industry. I think it's something that you know doesn't get enough recognition. Uh, it's not as easy to get into as people might think. And there are a lot of mix- misconceptions, too, that people might might perceive in terms of you as a male performer and uh and i kind of feel too the stigma when it surrounds the female talent is more difficult for them to get out of that than it is for a male talent so it's just cool to see different different perspectives and really see this as a business side of it because as much as it is sex and entertainment at the same time it's work it's a business and Ryan is another perfect example guys of somebody who who wants to be in it who who's wanted to do it and is happy to do it and uh, you know he was dealing with some issues health wise and now he's a lot better now so I'm thankful that hopefully it continues into the end of the year and in 2019 as well and I would love to have him on the show again because he's got a lot uh, a lot to look forward to and uh, and uh, we can't wait to have him back on the show again so guys for me the trendsetter Brian Berger make sure you guys follow us on uh, all our social media platforms out there, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, you know, you know, at High Spot Podcast, because Jeff and I, for our wrestling entertainment show, put on an episode every Friday, so make sure you guys support that. Support our YouTube channel. It's brand new. It's only about four months old, guys, and you have tremendously shown me something that I didn't believe that you guys actually enjoy the content, are supporters of it, like what we do, and there are no words to describe how much that means to me. From the bottom of my heart, I say thank you to you guys liking us on YouTube. So go to YouTube, type in the word High Spot Podcast. You'll see all the interviews we've done that I've conducted from Exotica to AVN. Also, you can see a chance of what Jeff and I have done in the world of professional wrestling. We've covered certain promotions like Ring of Honor, uh, Pro Wrestling Magic, Battle Club Pro, to name a few. Wrestle Pro as well. Don't I, I can't forget to mention those guys and how tremendous they've been to our success and uh, you know their professionalism of, of allowing us into their world. Um, also, you know, you get to see Jeff and I at WrestleCon in New Orleans, Louisiana, covering SuperCard of Honor, covering all the wrestling events, going to you know WrestleCon again and, and, and interviewing all this talent that we've uh, admired throughout the years and had a chance to speak to them for a few minutes and them you know, being very gracious with their time. So guys, thank you so much. Make sure you follow that. Like, subscribe. Always appreciate it. And we appreciate you guys because there's only one reason and one reason only why I, the trendsetter, do this. And it's for you, the crew.